Hi folks, just this brief intro to the video that you're about to watch about the concrete project, but I just wanted to give everyone a shout out. We continue to grow as a YouTube channel. I'm very thankful to all of you who are watching. We just passed the 50,000 views mark, which is amazing to me that we got that many. It's like um, over 3,100 hours of viewing time. So. Thank you so much for all of you who are watching and enjoying these videos. Thank you for your support. And Lord willing, we'll keep them coming. So let's go on to our concrete project. Hi folks, something a little different, another small project to do here. It's a bit breezy, so I hope you can hear. I don't know what the wind may do to the microphone, so apologies in advance if there's a problem. What I've done here is I had two steps coming up here to the mailbox and they were concrete but were old and cracked and crumbling and it was getting to the point that it just wasn't safe so what i've done is i've broken out all the concrete dug out all the main stones and dug any kind of loose dirt i could get out and what I, my plan is is to put new concrete in here i'm going to form this up uh, with wood tomorrow and then i'll hand mix and pour some concrete in uh, to try to repair this. I'll just give you a look see here. This is just standard 80 pound bags of concrete, Quickcrete brand. Uh, it's not hard to work with. You'll see that tomorrow. It's heavy, but it's manageable for the homeowner to use if you've never done it before. I am not a contract uh, masonry contractor, an expert by any means, but I've done some small projects over the years, so I feel confident enough to do this. Now, uh, what I'm going to need to do is make two steps again, where this hole is here. It's going to come up about six inches for the bottom step, and then however tall the top step ends up being is what I'll do with it. Uh, it's probably not up to any kind of specific code, but I don't care. It's just to walk into my house. It's not anything I'm worried about. Uh, and, um, and it's really a repair. It's nothing... Um, it's not like I'm adding a new set of steps. I'm just fixing the old in a sense. Now normally what I'd have done is on the upper end here, I'd have dug deeper here. But this is almost all one piece of flat shale that somebody put down there. And in fact, I'm thinking that that was probably the original step uh, here to get up to the road level. Maybe over 100 years ago, I, I don't know. This concrete is old. You can tell it was hand mixed. It's not uh, something that somebody got from a concrete company or even used a lot of more modern, you know, uh, bagged concrete. It had a fair amount of ashes in it. You can kind of see some of those, that uh, coal cinder ashes uh, that they mix for fillers. It also had a fair amount of rocks mixed in. Again, that was an old trick too. You just didn't, so you don't have to use as much concrete. You throw some rocks in. I may end up doing this too. I don't know if I bought enough concrete. I, I just eyeballed it. I didn't try to do any calculations. So we'll see. Um, what I'll do is I'll form it all up. I'll pour the bottom step here first. And if I don't think I'm going to have enough concrete to do the top, I'll hold off on that until I can get enough to do it in one pour. I don't want I don't want two different um, pours of concrete on one step like that. That's a recipe for disaster. Now, typically, you want at least a four inch thick pad of concrete to keep it from cracking. And I may be making a big mistake here, but we'll see. I don't have four inches here. If I bring this up four inches on top of this uh, flat rock, that'll leave a tripping edge on the outside there of people coming in. I, I don't really want to do that. So what I'm going to try to get by with is to further reinforce whatever thickness I end up with. It should be two to three inches anyhow, maybe three inches. So it's not too far off. It's not like just putting a skim coat over the top. But what I'll also do is I'll reinforce it with metal mesh and hopefully that'll help to keep it from cracking. This is high strength concrete. That's, I think it's 3000 PSI or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, so it's a fairly good concrete. It's going to be a floating set of stairs because it's not below frost line. It's, there's no footer, so it might heave a little bit here and there with the weather. 
Um, so I'm just on the sides here. I'm going to minimally form and it'll just be concrete against dirt. So if it has to float, if it has to heave a little bit up and down in the, in the changing seasons, it can do that one piece rather than cracking. But we'll see what happens. I mean, again, the, the proper way to do this would have been to dig everything straight down, get below frost line, put, um, you know, put, put stone down and then pour it that way but that's an awful lot of concrete for the use that this would get either that or you'd get a set of precast steps that you can buy you know maybe a, a set of two steps and then you'd have it delivered by a flatbed truck and then they would hoist it into place and then you'd level it and fill it in around that way but that's a lot more expensive so um, concrete's like four bucks a bag so <laughs> you know it's a whole lot cheaper to do it this way. I have mesh around, I have wood around to frame it, so to form it up. So uh, that'll be the next part of this operation. I'll come back to you when I get to that point of showing the wood forming. The goal is just so that the concrete doesn't go everywhere, that you're holding it in one place, and then the form stay in place until the concrete sets up, that it can't ooze anywhere. Um, the weather tomorrow is supposed to be low 60s and sunny and with breeze with a breeze so i think the concrete will dry nicely um, i'm not worried about that but this is a project i've got to get done before the winter because once it gets too cold you can't pour concrete after the temperature goes below freezing unless you have special setup special chemicals added to the concrete to keep it from freezing uh, uh, some of the commercial guys they they tent the area their uh, tent and heat the area that they're concreting with you know, plastic you know plastic um, enclosures and things well I'm obviously not going to do all of that so this is what um, I'm going to try to get done this is a small repair it's been a mess most of the summer but just it's too miserable to be out here in 90 95 degree heat digging this out and then mixing concrete by hand is heavy work too so it'll be a nice day to do that tomorrow and then after that's done then I just have the cleanup to get rid of the old debris here but I'm guessing that like I said this this concrete that was put in here and you can see there was a a bit of a retaining wall that's in kind of rough shape but somebody did that at some point i'm guessing that those are both going on about a hundred years old um just judging by the look of the concrete it was it's very hard and concrete continues to harden over time and it's the aggregate in it is a little coarse so i'm thinking that yeah probably it was a homemade setup here somebody had one of those uh, mixers, maybe one of those electric mixers or gas-powered mixers, I don't know. Uh, they might have had some of those a hundred years ago, I'm not sure. But, and then they just did it here. Or they had a, they have a, like a flat metal, oh, it almost looks like a tub for a wheelbarrow, you know, uh, that they use to mix concrete in. You set it next to your job, you mix it up and then you just dump it in. Maybe they had something like that, I don't know. But this is the project we're working on, a little different from what we normally have done on our site. So uh, come along for the ride and we will hopefully have a nice new set of steps here before the winter time and, no, and it will be safe for people to go up and down on. Thank you for watching. All right, so after looking at this a little more this morning, I decided what I'm going to do is pour it into two pads. The bottom step which will extend under where the top step will be so they'll be locked in kind of like that but it'll be a whole lot easier given the uneven terrain and what i'm working with here if i could have dug this out as a nice big even trench um, it would have been better to do it all in one piece but there's so many rocks and so much other stuff to do this all by hand to dig that all down by hand would have been just crazy so um, here's what i've done i got a two by sixes pieces here that'll be the form for the bottom step so the bottom step will come the concrete will come right to the to the top there of the wood I'll use the wood to strike off the concrete and level it and um, I threw a few more handfuls of the old concrete down in a hole to kind of level off the bottom I could have probably gotten some crushed stone to do that but it's such a small project it's not worth the time and I don't know if you can see this on the film or not. Yeah, I guess so. I have this lightweight uh, piece of wire fencing that I'm going to put in there to reinforce the concrete. It's not heavy-duty 
wire mesh like you'd normally use for concrete. But I think, again, for a small project like this, this will do what I need it to do. It's just to reinforce it, to help keep it from cracking, and to, to keep it in one solid piece. And uh, it'll be permanently embedded in the middle of the concrete. So my next move is to start mixing concrete and filling this hole. And I will come back to you when I get to that point. It's not hard to do, but I'll show you how it's done, or at least how I've learned to do it. All right, I'll be back. Okay, here's a quick lesson in mixing uh, ready mix concrete. Again, not an expert, but this is what I've done. So I just dumped the first bag into a wheelbarrow here. And I'm going to use just a garden hoe. I also will sometimes use a, a garden rake, whatever works for you. And what you're going to do is start adding water, just plain water, a bit at a time. I think they figure for every bag you should have two to three quarts of water. You don't want to dump it all in at once, you want to mix it up. This is the hardest part here of the job because it takes a lot of, a lot of effort to, to mix this heavy, heavy material here. Now you want to keep adding water until it gets to the consistency you want to pour your concrete. Now I'm trying to think what could I compare to you where I usually keep mine. If it's too dry it's going to be pretty clumpy and it, and it might not be mixed up well. If it's too wet, it's going to be soupy and it'll take that much longer to cure. So you want something kind of in the middle, something that you can pour in that's not going to just stick here in the, in the wheelbarrow, but not something that's going to pour out like water. Um, I don't know, maybe like a pudding consistency. I, I, I don't, don't know what the right word is. I'll show you when I get it to where I want it to be, just so you can see. And then I'll just either dump the wheelbarrow, shovel it in, whatever works. Um, and we'll go from there and I'll just do a bag at a time. I could probably put two bags in this uh, wheelbarrow, but it's, I've learned it's really much more difficult then because you've got so much dry material and it's so hard to work it. If you do one at a time, it's more manageable. Again, if I had a bigger job, I'd get my uh, electric mixer out. I have a small electric mixer. Um, that'll do a couple bags at a time and it does all the work for you but this isn't a big enough job to really bother with all that because then you get all that cleanup afterwards so at any rate uh, let me start on this and then I'll show you when this is about the consistency we want now we have it about the consistency we want it to be As you can see here it will push fairly easily it's not soupy or runny but it is uh, fully wet just a couple tips with adding water. Add it slowly. Spend plenty of time mixing. You don't want any dry clumps mixed in with the uh, concrete anywhere. And when it's getting close to where you want it to be, slow way down on how much water you add because it'll seem like, oh, this is dry. I'm going to dump a whole bunch more water in and suddenly you've got a soup. When you get down close, it doesn't take much more water to bring it to where you need it to be. So I'm ready now to put this down in a hole and I can't do that with the camera in my hand so I'll just have to show you when it's in. Be right back. Okay the first bag is in the hole. It poured fairly easily right out of the wheelbarrow no problems. I didn't really have to scrape any out. Uh, I smoothed it out a bit with my trowel uh, when I got it in there and I'm ready to start the second second bag now. I'll just keep doing this till I fill this up. Let me just show you briefly the tools I'm using here. Maybe you know this and this is all old hat for you, but if you're, if you're new to this, let me just tell you the masonry tools. This is a pointed trowel, flat, steel, or different sizes. I have a bigger one here because I'm not doing too much fancy putsy work. This is a square trowel. Oh, end up throwing this down. This is a square trowel. It's just a flat piece of metal and it's also for smoothing over. Um, and then I also have a, a larger one here too. And then this, is, I guess this is a homemade or I'm not sure. This is just a float to smooth off the top. Uh, they make different size floats like this. If you're doing a big project, they make this huge one that's on a long pole. It's called a bull float. The only other thing I need to do here yet when I get close is I need to make a strike off board, which basically is just, I'm going to get a piece of two by four and I'm going to run it 
along the rails here between here and there then I can just push back and forth to make sure that I'm level and I have no pitting or no humps I want a nice flat surface here and what I will also do I'm not sure how I want to do this yet since this is a step I don't want it to be the surface of it to be too smooth because then people could slip if it's wet I want to rough it up a little bit uh, maybe I'll take what they call a broom finish I'll just take my uh, dust brush there and run across the top a little bit so that it's kind of a rough surface or I've got a not small notch trowel I could run some grooves across to help with that I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it yet based on what, but I just don't want it to be smooth because if somebody's coming in walking here and they're coming down if it's smooth it's wet they could slip certainly if it's icy or snowy um, so I just want to I don't want to make it too uneven because then it's very difficult to clean the snow or ice off but just enough so that it's not perfectly smooth that somebody would slip and fall so I'm going to continue this now I'll come back to you when basically this pad is all right you can see now I've got this full of concrete that black line through there's just a shadow from the mailbox here that's nothing to worry about I've got to strike it off yet and what I have is a just a two by four that's wide enough so it'll run from rail to rail from the outside edges of the wood. Now normally when you're doing a strike off, what you want to do is get it to the height you need. And if there's any extra, you're removing that. But I might be a little high in spots here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to push it all towards the back uh, and then just leave it there because I'm going to pour the top pad on top of it. So it'll make maybe make a little lip that the two will lock in together. I don't know. Uh, but it's not worth digging out a few pieces. But... Um, and this um, step is roughly level side to side, but it pitches a little bit forward, which is okay because that's the way the terrain runs. And also, you don't want it to be perfectly level. You want it that if it rains, you want the rain to run off of it, not lay on top of it. And especially because there's going to be a bit of a seam there with the top piece, I don't want the water to sneak back underneath and cause trouble. I'd rather have it all run forward. It's not pitched forward enough that people will, can't walk on it. Um, but uh, so I just, I, I'm doing this kind of eyeballing it. I'm not being really precise and accurate as I could be. I did put my little level on the, the form to make sure that it was fairly close. So... Um, it won't be perfect, but again, this is an old farmhouse on an old farm. As long as it does the job, nobody's going to notice that it might be off plumb or off level by an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch or something like that. Um, so it will suffice to do the job well, and I didn't have to try to kill myself with prep for doing it. So all I've got to do yet is strike this, and then we're going to let this dry. I'm going to um, probably get more concrete tonight and maybe I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow so it might be Saturday till I get the second part of of this poured but the project is coming along and I'll keep you updated as we go thanks for watching okay troweling is about finished you can see it's a nice smooth surface now it's still a bit wet to put any kind of um, friction uh, striations in the top you know just the the broom finish or just a little bit so it's not too slippery when it sets up a little bit more I'll do that so that they uh, don't just ooze back into place you know it's still the top is top is a little bit on the wet side and as you can see I did have a little bit of extra concrete and all I did is I pushed it towards the back there that'll all be underneath the rest the other pad when I pour it so uh, it won't be a problem but uh, we'll go from there, so I will come back to you with the second part of this concrete step project. All right, I took the forms off yesterday, the form off yesterday, and the bottom step, it turned out pretty well. I'm happy with it. As you can see, the excess did dry well in behind, and I've chipped out a bit more the upper area for the second pad that I'm going to pour today. Um, we were supposed to get rain yesterday. It didn't rain. But I had already planned if it was going to rain, I was going to work on juicing more tomatoes. So that's what I did. That's why I didn't get to this. So I'm back at it. It's uh, Saturday, so hopefully it's only supposed to be about 60 today. But I'm hoping that four or five hours of cure time before the temperature really drops will be enough that it'll be okay. I don't think it'll freeze. It might take an extra day or so to, to uh, 
you know be solid but that's okay I don't care it's supposed to be lower 60s and sunny tomorrow so I think we're okay yet and I'm gonna do it so um, the next step is going to be to form up the upper area there I'm just going to use two by fours for that because as I told you before the pad won't be as thick and then we'll uh, see if we can't get that all poured in one chunk today so um, there's something else I was going to mention, but I can't remember now, so I'll come back to it later. So hang Okay, I've got everything formed up, ready to mix and pour the second step. As you can see, the second one's going to be a bit taller than the first one, but it's not what I preferred, but I didn't want to try to do three steps here. That just wouldn't work with that big rock there and the space that I have. So it'll be a, a bit of a high step, but that's okay. At least it's a solid step rather than the way it was crumbling. And again, I put my light mesh in there to reinforce the concrete I'm pouring. I won't show you me mixing all this stuff up. I'll come back to you when this is poured and and all set and then you can see kind of the finished product, okay? All right. All right, our second step is poured and I've floated it and troweled it. I just have to wait till it sets up a little more to put the, the broom finish on the top to rough it up and then this project is done. So I will come back to you with one final video when I pull the forms off and you can see the steps when they're completed. I'll set to fill in around the edges there with some dirt and some, I'll put some more construction debris like right around there. That'll fill in nicely. So that's what the project has turned out to be. I did make one mistake early on in this video I wanted to correct. Uh, I said that this Quickcrete Ready Mix Concrete um, is 3,000 pound PSI, but it's actually 4,000 pound PSI. I looked on the label, I didn't remember, but so it's a, a heavier duty, higher strength concrete than even I thought. So I re certainly recommend it if you're doing small projects, it seems to hold up well. I've used it for small projects in the house, I've used it for small projects outside, and it does seem to do well. So, and I'm sure that there are similar products other places in the country or even in the different countries. So but yeah, 4,000 pound PSI uh, dry concrete mix. Remember, it's got the, the cement, it's got the aggregate, and it's got the sand all in. All you have to do is add water, mix it to the right consistency, and pour. So I'll be back with the final reveal on this project in just a Well, folks, there we are. The project is finished. I pulled the forms off of the top piece today and I also filled in the along the sides with some of this construction debris from digging out the old and the dirt and so on. I'm going to uh, I packed it down with a shovel but it'll probably settle a bit more so I'm going to leave this pile here for a week or so and probably come back and top it off some more so that there are no uh, you know um, tripping points or places where you could turn an ankle because of the the dirt compacting you know what i'm talking about but the job is now done the two steps are here and operational they're good and solid there's no problem nothing's going anywhere and um, concrete dried very well even though the weather was a little cool so thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in country living on a shoestring. Please let your friends know about this site, have them subscribe, ring, hit the notifications bell so that um, when we post more videos, they'll be up to speed on them as well. And again, thank you for the success you have made this page with your interest. Take care.